Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. We were discussing about freezing and freeze drying in this chapter that we are you know discussing since last a few classes. So, today we will uh, continue with that. Last class we have discussed the freeze drying principle and we have calculated uh, the freezing time based on the heat transfer uh, uh, through the unidirectional case we have assumed and also the mass transfer and then we have related them to find out the temperature profile of the surface and the uh, and the freezing front in terms of the freezing front and uh, also we have seen the governing principle behind this. Now, what are the components of a freeze dryer if we want to uh, you know design them then what, what will be the components that we can discuss now. So, in a freeze dryer we need to have all such arrangements. First there should be a, there should be a chamber where we can maintain the vacuum in a proper way without minimal leakage. Okay. So, there will be a ch chamber, there will be a vacuum chamber that contains or hold the trays for food uh, for keeping the food during drying. Then there will be heaters to supply the latent heat of sublimation. There should be refrigeration coil to the condenser to condense the vapor. So, it needs to cool the condenser so that the vapors can be converted to ice and also it needs it needs to lower the temperature of the product to uh, you know freezing point because we need to first freeze the material. Okay. So, therefore, we need it and uh, vacuum pump is needed to remove the non condensable vapor. So, first we need to uh, use the uh, we need to remove the non condensable gases from the chamber later on when the sublimation will occur then the vacuum pump will uh, operate all those uh, vapor to, to take it out from the chamber and then it will come to the condenser first it will it will condense there will take out and vacuum pump will be continuously on to maintain the uh, lower pressure level inside the chamber. The condenser is actually used for uh, the condensation of the ice crystal. They give up their the vapors contact the condensing surface and they give up their heat energy and turn into ice crystal. Finally, we need also the control and measurement unit because there is so many points that we need to maintain. First is the temperature of the sublimation front. So, the temperature control should be proper and for that we need to maintain the source uh, temperature from where the heat is coming. So, whether the, the, that is a convective source or a radiative source. So, the source temperature we need to uh, control. We also need to control the uh, the level of vacuum inside and the rate of heat transfer uh, to the material. So, here we can see that this is the shelf and, and the chambers, but not only always this particular kind of geometry is required because sometimes we use the liquid material in a, in a freeze drying also which eventually uh, you know the slurry material which will become uh, in a state of glassy condition. We need sometimes the vials also. So, different configuration of freeze dryers are available uh, based on the requirement that whether we are going to dry the direct uh, fruits and vegetable or muscle food or some uh, liquid sample uh, the medicine okay, essential, uh, essential uh, components bioactive components like that. So, based on that the configuration may change. So, this is the most basic one which is used for the uh, frozen food or vegetables etcetera. Okay. So, 
So, uh, this is a kind of a system where this is the chamber and there is a ice condenser and here is a refrigeration system which is con continuously used to cool the shells also because first we need to freeze them and also the um, the uh, you know condense the in the in the condenser to condense the uh, vapor to the ice and there is a vacuum pump attached to it to maintain the reduced pressure level in the uh, chamber. Now, contact. So, there are different types of freeze dryer. So, we will see some of them here. One is the contact or conduction freeze dryer, where the food is placed onto ribbed trays which rest on heater plates with uneven contact and dries more slowly as heat is transferred by conduction to only one side of the food. Okay. So, uh, this is kind of a system, it is a high capacity system where the heating plates are given like this, food is kept on that and there is a rib tray. So, we can we can see that since the thickness is more and we know that the time required is ha having a direct relation with z square that is the thickness square. So, as uh, this uh, dry layer thickness will will increase. So, eventually uh, the time taken will be also increased. So, in this kind of a system heating plate is at the bottom. So, what will happen that heat transfer I mean when when the frozen when the material will first frozen then the whole thing will frozen first okay. and then the heat is going to uh, uh, transfer from the bottom to the to the material and the mass transfer will be from the top. Okay. So, eventually the upper layer will be getting dried Okay. So, the upper layer will be getting dried, so the moisture will be transferred through that. And we know we, uh, we have developed the equation of mass transfer with the relation with this sublimation front T i and the temperature of the shelf which is uh, here T o. Partial pressure here will be the pressure of P 0 because it is uh, kept under vacuum and here the temperature will be uh, the pressure will be P i okay. and the permeability through the dry layer that is capital pi. Uh, so, all such parameter we can calculate. Now, uh, we will see another system which is accelerated freeze dryer. So, what is the mechanism here? In this equipment food is held between two layers of expanded metal mesh and subjected to a slight pressure on both side. So, rapid heat transfer causes from in this case and reduction in the drying time. Okay. So, if this two are heating plate, this top and bottom are the heating plate and there is a mesh. So, obviously, from both the side heat transfer will take place and uh, the drying will be faster compared to the single side drying and uh, since uh, these are the these are the mesh so obviously we can we can accept that here the radiative source of uh, heat will be given to the material and the and eventually the material will be dried from both the side now next will be radiation freeze dryers here also we are we are keeping the infrared radiation uh, from the radiant heaters that those radiations is coming and that is used to heat shallow layers of the food on the flat trays so uh, we we need to keep we need to design the system in such a way because infrared need to penetrate and uh, based on the penetration property we, we can decide the thickness of the food material. So, since here the we cannot get very high 
penetration that is why we are uh, taking uh, a thin layer. So, heating heating is more in uniform more uniform than in the conduction type system. So, constant drying condition uh, should be prevailing vapor movement is approximately 1 meter per second and little risk of product carryover. Okay. Next is microwave heating in freeze drying. So, microwave heating which is a volumetric heating. So, obviously, the heat generation will be very fast special oscillators known as magnetron generate high frequency of electromagnetic radiation and the interaction of electric and magnetic field results in the development of space charges. Okay. So, products are kept on the trays these are the uh, magnetron and here the volumetric uh, heat generation will be there on the product trays vapor will come out that is going to the condenser and that will form ice crystal and constantly this vacuum level or pressure level is maintained by using this vacuum pump. So, this is the drying chamber. So, this is how microwave heating is uh, used in the freeze drying. Now, there are certain disadvantage of microwave freeze drying first is uneven heating because we know that uh, microwave uh, radiation when being absorbed by the uh, you know uh, the material in the in the food which is the dielectric material. So, because of the dipole rotation and ionic polarization the heating happens in the microwave and there are some uh, hot uh, pockets will generate in case of the microwave No, all the food cannot be uniformly heated. So, that is a drawback in normal uh, microwave operation as well. So, that will prevail uh, here and that can cause the uneven uh, you know uh, drying also because of this uneven heating. So, different component as for example, fat have different loss factor dielectric loss factor uh, we know that dielectric loss factor and dielectric constant dielectric constant determines that how much will be the absorption of uh, microwave radiation and dielectric loss factor signifies that what will be the dissipation of the uh, energy in terms of heat. Okay. So, because all the components in the food is not of same uh, dielectric property that is one point and also if we consider the moisture distribution that is not also similar in, in all the situation uh, and also the radiation is not uh, also uh, uniform. We also use the a turntable inside a microwave, but then also there not be similar distribution of heat. So, this changes in the formulation and addition of salt may affect the rate of heat. So, there are many parameters that can cause the uneven heating in case of the microwave freeze drying. So, this is a property of the microwave not for freeze, but since we are heating by that, uh, so it will happen. And there is a risk of melting because the loss factor of the liquid water is considerably higher than the than that of the ice. Okay. So, does any amount of local melting would cause rapid propagation of melting and collapse. Last one is gas ionization and glow discharge. So, ionization of the gas in the microwave cavity and the occurrence of glow discharge are undesirable effect that may take place when operating with the microwave inside vacuum. Now, different types of commercial freeze dryer. So, uh, before going to the uh, different commercial freeze dryer, I should I would like to uh, inform all of you one uh, quality parameter of uh, freeze drying that I, I mentioned that I uh, will tell that in the freeze drying section because in the freezing section we have learned that uh, slow freezing and 
fast freezing phenomena ok. So, we have already learned the slow freezing and fast or rapid freezing right. Now, in that case one, one thing is that in case of freezing we are not removing the moisture. So, one damage it may cause because of the large crystal development the uh, cell disruption was happen ok. So, in the in the uh, cell structure there is an intercellular fluid and there is large number of ice crystal will be there which may break the structure. But in case of rapid freezing we have seen that the small small you know if the if this is the distributed cell structure and this is the uh, you know liquid. So, very small small ice crystal will form that does not damage the uh, you know structure of the cell biological cell material. But the advantage of rapid freezing if we uh, do that in case of freeze drying as well because here also first we are freezing by keeping the product in low temperature ambience then we are uh, doing the sublimation. So, during sublimation if the uniform ice crystal formation is there that will directly sublime to the uh, to the uh, um, ambient where the where the vacuum level is maintained and very well perforation or porous structure will form ok. So, because of that as I have mentioned that in freeze drying the density of the product will be even lower than the uh, Mm, you know original case and in other drying method it is very high. So, this is because of this phenomena that because of large porous structure the, the, the texture of the material does not damage and that will be intact and when we want to thaw it we can again uh, you know regain the, the structure of the material. So, very good porous structure we can observe in case of the freeze drying and that is how it is very important there is no shrinkage and and the quality looks like the original as it was in the fresh condition. So, different types of commercial freeze dryer, uh, multi batch freeze dryer, the first one which is a multi batch freeze dryer. So, here we have insulated wall so that as we have assumed that all the heat to be supplied to the frozen layer will be used for sublimation of ice to uh, vapor, but not for any other uh, heat leakage or removal. These are the shelves ok. There is a condenser in these two side. So, as and when the uh, vapors will come out then that will come to the condenser first and will uh, form the ice crystal. There is a vacuum pump, oil trap, there is a motor and there is a refrigerator it has two purpose first to lower down the temperature of the shelves to maintain the to, to bring the material to the uh, frozen point freezing point and another is the uh, you know to make the condenser uh, temperature low enough. So, that the vapor can be uh, converted to ice there and there is a continuous tray freeze dryer. So, continuous tray freeze dryer uh, there is a vacuum pump condenser and again uh, two more vacuum pump is there. So, there are two two log gates from where we can we can discharge and uh, load the material ok. Uh, where this in the first case this is a batch system. So, one ba batch by batch we can upload and uh, download by, by this uh, one front door only. Whereas, in this case we can continuously uh, send it to, to this first and second log gate and then can uh, the product can be taken out. Vibrational freeze dryer. So, in that what we do is the product is coming in from uh, one controlled hopper system that we can design the flow rate uh, as, as we want we can design we can fit a valve that how much the flow rate should be allowed and then the product is uh, coming on a on a tray which is uh, you know hinge with a spring because the we want to cause that vibration and the product is out from the bottom again it is controlled by a valve there is a vibratory conveyor system given 
vibratory conveyor. So, it is, it is conveying at the same time it is vibrating just because it want to expose all the surface to the to the uh, chill temperature uh, and, and also the, uh, the, the ambient where the, where the partial pressure is very low for water and in the inside it is very high. So, all the surface should be exposed to the experimental condition of the low vacuum and uh, heating uh, what we are providing that is why this kind of vibratory arrangement has been made okay. and the heating plates are there. So, here we have two heating plates one this and one at the bottom. Then there is continuous circular plate dryer. So, here also uh, the entry of the circulation uh, entry of the plates from the top is the product path how it is more coming down at the bottom there is a condenser and also from the exit this uh, um, vapor will be taken out. Vacuum spray dryer vacuum spray freeze dryer. So, here what happened that the product atomized by fluid nozzle and frozen by evaporative freezing. Okay. Sublimation of frozen sublimation of uh, frozen front at vacuum chamber nearly 67 uh, Pascal pressure. So, we can see that very low uh, vacuum very low pressure we are maintaining that is very high vacuum inside the chamber and like normal spray drying where the concentrated liquid is atomized through a nozzle. Here also the product is atomized by a fluid nozzle and frozen by evaporative freezing that means it is exposed to uh, reduce vacuum uh, reduce uh, pressure level and lower temperature uh, so that it will be uh, evaporate and sublimation uh, as I have mentioned very low pressure is maintained up to 15 percent of moisture loss can take place in this mechanism and obtained particles of about 150 mm diameter. So, this is the jet through which the spray is coming into the chamber there is a refrigeration coil which will lower the temperature of this uh, uh, of, of the uh, chamber condition there is a hopper and there is a moving there is a uh, moving bell and the heating plates also there. Okay. So, when this particles are coming on this bell it is continuously moving. So, it is uh, coming through the uh, heating plates and then this heating plates are providing heat of sublimation and finally, we are getting the uh, dried product freeze dried product. So, freeze drying related process if we uh, sum up them first one is pre freezing that is to reduce the uh, reduce the freeze drying time cycle. So, here what we can do the schematic diagram of the direct contact freezing. So, direct and indirect both can be tried uh, in the direct contact freezing the product is directly exposed to the refrigerant and in the uh, indirect contact freezing the uh, the food is exposed to or it is you know kept on a material which is being cooled by the refri refrigeration. So, direct contact with the refrigeration uh, does not take place there is a physical barrier a plate or something will be there which is uh, causing the heat transfer. So, either uh, conductive heat transfer through that metal or something that will happen. But pre freezing can be done in case of immersion freezing where we directly expose the material to the refrigerant. Now, another uh, important concept is freeze concentration. So, freeze concentration what is this? The it involves the fractional crystallization of water to ice and subsequent removal of ice. So, here the all uh, water available or all the moisture available in the food is not converted to ice completely it is part by part as the crystallization as the ice crystal formation will be there the ice is being removed 
So, eventually gradual concentration uh, is being done. Okay. So, involves the fractional crystallization of water to ice and subsequent removal of the ice. This is achieved in a uh, paddle crystallizer here uh, that we are using. Potentially attractive method for concentration of fruit juices, coffee, tea and uh, selected alcoholic beverages and the separation process of the ice crystal is done in wash column. So, what happened that uh, in this particular figure, this particular figure where we can see that uh, there is a crystallizer which is a paddle crystallizer we are constantly uh, rotating it. Okay. So, so that the uh, you know uh, better heat transfer can take place. So, we are constantly rotating this there is a feed which is a, a scrapped heat exchanger is there and then it is coming to uh, this section from where the ice slurry whatever has been there that has been taken because uh, eventually we are taking out all the ice crystal formed and then there is a there is a filter attached and there is a uh, melter also. So, high purity water will be taken away from that melting section and there is a compacted ice bath where this ice slurry is deposited and this uh, the liquid concentrate which is which is going out that can be recycled if needed. Okay. If we want further concentration we can take out that after removal of the uh, uh, of the ice crystal. So, this is potentially attractive for the fruit juice because uh, if we want to make the concentrated juice. So, the moisture we need to remove and uh, however, if in, in certain cases where we cannot take out the moisture uh, you know completely or in the pure form if some dissolved nutrients are going away with that. So, in that case we cannot perform uh, that function. For example, for the milk concentration there will be a problem if we use this one because some milk solid will be lost in that case. But in fruit juices or coffee tea this kind of uh, beverages it, it is used because in that case we can uh, most of the water can be take out by this method. And in, since it is a freeze concentration so uh, I mean without heating we are doing concentration. So, the quality of the product heat sensitive compound for example, all the polyphenols in the tea and uh, antioxidants of the fruit juices those will be properly preserved. So, in the juice we, we freeze it first and then the separation of those two phases concentrated juice and the ice this is the flow diagram how freeze concentration is being done. Now, defrosting which is amount of the ice deposited in the condenser grows and the removal of the ice is called the defrosting. So, this is needed that as, as we have mentioned that pre-freezing which is one part uh, of the of the freeze drying where we, uh, we freeze all the moisture of the food either by direct contact with the refrigerant or by the indirect contact. Similarly, defrosting is also very important because if the ice deposition is very much high in the condenser it will not work further unless we defrost it properly. So, the defrosting may be done by passing hot air over the condenser hot water or steam or using a uh, heating element. So, defrosting uh, fluid uh, the defrosting fluid is uh, input in this section and there is a line to the vacuum pump there is a condenser condenser coils there are there are baffles and airtight chamber is there where the heating plates are kept there is a ball bulb which is regulating this uh, uh, transfer of transfer of uh, air from this to this and there is a drain valve also so when we when we want to defrost it we we circulate that uh, hot stream of water and all the uh, you know ice will be melt and that can be taken away. So, we will stop here and uh, we are almost finished the topic of uh, freeze drying and then in the next class we will continue with a new topic. Thank you.